Welcome back to Rev That Bowl. My name is Jason Erlarge, and today we're going to be talking about uh, what new bowlers should know uh, um, for purchasing the first bowling ball. Uh, why, the reason I want to bring this for you today is as a pro shop operator, I do get a lot of the uh, newer clientele in coming in talking about uh, they want to get a new bowling ball, accessories, shooter bag, all that sort of stuff. So I wanted to kind of give those new bowlers a guideline of what to talk about or the information they should know before they step in the pro shop and also what questions to ask for pro shop operator. A couple of good pieces of information to, to realize uh, or pay attention to when you are just bowling recreationally with a house fall uh, or anything like that would be um, what weight uh, possibly is the ball. That kind of helps the pro shop operator narrow down what kind of weight you would need. Uh, also, when you're throwing maybe your buddy's ball or something like that, if there's certain things about that ball you really like, pay attention to those as well. Obviously, budget would be one of them. Now, if you don't know a whole lot about bowling balls or not know the structure of how they're priced, uh, that can be a little wishy-washy. Uh, but at the same time, you know, setting your $150, $200 march will help narrow down some of the selections for you. Some of the other things to think about too would be, what are you trying to get out of bowling? You know, is it just recreationally? Are you trying to join a league? Is it trying, you're trying to get a little bit better at the sport. Uh, there's certain things that your pro shop operator can help you with uh, to develop you as a bowler uh, and kind of push you forward. So some of the things to think about would be, are you a one-handed bowler? Can you use your sum? Do you want to use your sum? If you've been watching you no know, Belma or Simo and, and you really want to be a two-hander, there's those things to think about as well. So uh, before you step foot into the pro shop, you know, think about the style you want. Think about where you want to go as a bowler, uh, the weights you're throwing as far as house balls or your furry to button bowling ball, uh, those sort of things before you step into the pro shop. Once you figured out kind of that pieces of information, for me as a pro shop operator, if someone comes in and they're looking for their first ball, right? I'm going to ask them questions like, well, wait, were you throwing out on the lanes? If you don't know that answer, there's sort of tests we can do to kind of figure out what weight you need. Including in that, uh, please let your operator know of any physical ailments, you know, wrist, finger, elbow problems, if you have uh, call the tunnel in your hands or arthritis or certain stuff like that, rotator cuff surgery, something like that, that will help determine, you know, the weight and then the style possibly of what you'll be moving to in the future. Some of the other questions I like to ask newer bowlers. Bowling style is a big one. Um, you, if you want to be, you want to use your thumb, do you not want to use your thumb, uh, a poor variety of left seat. Those are things that can help narrow down for the cross, for the shop operator of what, how they're going to be drilling or what certain ball they're drilling. I uh, always ask to the, the bud you're looking for, obviously, there's two different types of bowling balls for the most part I would give to a newer bowler. The first one would be plastics. Uh, plastics are gonna be your cheapest option. Also, they're gonna be the least performing out of any of the bowling balls on the market. They're really meant to go straight. Uh, they're really good for people who want to just have some fun at a low price point. They don't really care about scoring. They just wanna have a beer and enjoy this dessert of cells in the lane. So there's certain bowling balls I would recommend to newer bowlers, uh, and there's certain bowling balls I wouldn't recommend. Some of those bowling balls would be like the Hammer Raw. These would be a good entry level uh, reactive resin for newer bowlers at a lower price point. They still hook, they'll still teach you the, the what ball motion is and how a ball hooks, but it's gonna be a nice entry level cost into the sport. Along with that, uh, you can always upgrade to like midline balls, uh, like these ones. Usually the balls I don't recommend to be something higher end, simply because they're a little harder to control. And most people starting the sport out are not gonna wanna pay 250 to $300 for the first bowling ball, especially if you're trying to see if they wanna invest the time and money into the sport. So usually something midline or maybe something like the Raj, Tropical Storms, some of the other entry level, the Axe, uh, some of the other entry level bowling balls that uh, get you into the sport at a lower price point. With that said, this is where we kind of start getting into the fitting portions um, of a new bowler. Um, again, bowling style will come into play because once we kind of figure out what ball you're looking for, what weight you're looking for, we're going to start talking about how you want to be as a bowler. 
two-handed, one-handed. Most importantly, do you want to upgrade to fingertip and slug or fingertip itself in general with grip, so without grip because of the two-hander or one-hander? Um, you definitely want to think about those things. Typically, those are an upgrade uh, in most pro shops. However, there's certain instances where I really suggest you make that upgrade uh, because most of the time, for most bowlers, 99% of bowlers, they're going to evolve to a fingertip style with grips without grip at some point in the future. So you can kind of make that decision and take that little leap forward to start out uh, and, and kind of get uh, ahead of the game a little bit because you know you probably will do it anyways, so you might as well take that step and do it now. So uh, for fingertips and slugs, talk to your pro shop operator when you get fitted if you want to do that or not. Uh, basically, with fingertips and with the slug, you're gonna have you're gonna have a sl slug in your thumb if you're a one-hander, and then you're gonna have your grips. Uh, these are rubber pieces that you could put your fingers in. They're gonna be a little more comfortable and put your fingers in uh, a hard cover stock of a ball. There are definitely certain people out there, usually not beginners, that don't use grips, but honestly, I don't know how they do it. All right, the last thing that you should be talking to pro shop operator about after you figured out what ball you need how to drill it and all those sort of things and be uh, accessory. So the number one thing that I would recommend for bowlers is ball, bag, and shoes. Having your own, obviously the bag to carry everything in, uh, but having your own ball and shoes is pretty important. Uh, you can definitely help evolve your game pretty quickly and you're not wearing a pair of shoes that have been worn by a thousand other people and that's fitted for you and it's comfortable. Comfortable is definitely a key word. So there's definitely, a lot of shoes available from the you know, $50 mark all the way up to the $250 mark. Talk to your pro shop operator about what shoe will work best for you and also what bag to, to go along with that. So with that said, go on YouTube. If you want to ingrain yourself in the sport and learn more, I always recommend YouTube Academy. I mean, you can find almost anything there. You can hop on to Rev It Up Bowling, check out some of our videos there, or hop on to some of the other YouTubers uh, that are on YouTube doing bowling ball videos that are bowling related as far as the ball reviews or just matches. Ingrain yourself into the sport, absorb the information, and it'll definitely help you down the road. So with that said, please remember to like, comment, subscribe. Much love, peace.